Now for our roundtable with Mariana Mancuso, Republican political strategist and News Channel 5 political analyst Brian Crowley. The way it looks, the members of the House of Representatives are expected to vote on impeachment in the coming days, and it seems a foregone conclusion in the Democratic-controlled House that we will have the third impeachment of a president in United States history. Democrats will be debating if the schedules run as they're expected shortly after that. We may have a Democratic vote on Wednesday. The Democrats will be holding a debate on Thursday. Talk about that sense of history and moment, how that's going to intertwine with the debate and with the American public about where these candidates are and where we go, because uh, at the end of the day, it, it is truly a historic moment in the nation's history. Well, it's going to be very interesting to see how the Democratic candidates for president mm -hmm. handle it on Thursday night. I mean, do they get really, really aggressive about it and mm -hmm. go after Trump? Do they try to stand away from it? Do they try to find some middle ground where they don't have to get totally involved but acknowledge the impeachment? I don't know how any of the candidates could stand in front of an audience of Democrats largely mm -hmm. and, and not, uh, ag you know, aggressively support the impeachment. And yet, uh, Mariana, Democrats watch, but Republicans and independents do too. And as you two have said uh, many times, the traction on this issue, and it may say a lot about our civic life and our civic engagement on all sides, but nonetheless, Democrats have been entrenched in their positions. Republicans have been entrenched in theirs. It's going to go to a Senate trial where Republicans are the majority. He will not be convicted and removed from office. And in some ways, we're right back at the debate and the nastiness and the loggerheads where we started. And Democrats have to play that into their calculus as they speak to an audience of largely Democrats, but not exclusively. How do you do that? Right. As you just pointed out, we're going to end up in this vicious cycle, right? If they don't convict in the Senate, it's just going to go back to, you know, Trump is not a good president, needs to be removed from office, et cetera. And I think with the Democrat candidates, what they're really going to have to do is work hard. And we've seen Joe Biden do this. He has been very adamant about how we need to uphold the Constitution and that the president has stepped out of line in the Constitution and it's time for Congress to take him to task for that. And we've heard the same thing from Senator Warren and Senator Sanders. And I think that that's going to be very important. And as Brian pointed out in the debate, we're going to be watching to see are they really going to take Trump to task or are they going to work to be viewed as the constitutionalist candidate? Two points on that. In fact, the Wall Street Journal said this week they were happy Democrats were re rediscovering the Constitution uh, as Aren't it was written. <laughs> uh, that was a comment from the, Wall Street, the conservative Wall Street Journal. Uh, but to the constitutional question, you, you heard the professor speaking to us saying had he been sitting there as a constitutional professor, not taking a political point of view, he did not see, based on what we've all heard in the public sphere, that this rose to a criminal offense that therefore is impeachable. What are your concerns? I was actually surprised to hear him yeah. say that it required to be a criminal offense. Mm -hmm. I don't know anything in the in, in the impeachment uh, part of the Constitution that says it has to be a criminal. You know, it's high, high crimes, crimes and, and misdemeanors. misdemeanors. I mean, you know, uh, and. Well, uh, uh, it, one professor's well, judgment, but, but it's part also, of the debate you're hearing. In right, the and you had three law professors, you know, picked by the Democrats who spoke eloquently <laughs> about why, it is this, impeachable. Why, it, why it was impeachable. And that's the beauty of the law. That's why we have people on both sides that are attorneys who argue the, yeah. argue the, argue the law. But it does put but us I, in a spin I, cycle that will continue. And, and look, you know, let me just add to that. I thought the Democrats last week did a poor job of selling their message. I think that uh, having the you know staff members interviewing staff members, uh, going on and on, uh, you know, uh, uh, you know, where both sides were getting their five minutes and saying the same things that they've been saying for weeks. I thought the Democrats did. I don't think the Republicans did a great job. Don't get me wrong, but the Democrats have the burden of selling the message to the to the citizens of the United States, and I, I think they did a poor job. What is your sense, Ben, and I do want to go back to the Biden question, the debate uh, in a moment, but what is your sense of the public engagement in general? All of us are political junkies, there are certainly those out there, but I talked to somebody last week and said, uh, always kind of says, hey, uh, Michael, keep me up on the news this week. I said, well, we're looking at possible impeachment of the president, and this person's like, oh, I just haven't really been keeping up. That It was an apolitical statement, but where are we in terms of our public engagement on this most crucial constitutional question? It's bottoming out. No one's paying attention, as you have pointed out. And you know, when we talk about into the, you know, to your point and Brian's point about high crimes and misdemeanors in the Constitution and whether or not we can impeach this president, at the time that that was set forth within the Constitution, we didn't even have a criminal code written. So it leaves a lot of wiggle room, as we've seen, for interpretation. And when it comes to the average American, the problem is, is the boiling of the talking points have not narrowed down to something that is succinct and easily digestible. And that has been the biggest problem for the Democrats in this moment. And in a world of Twitter and social 
social media feeds where it needs to be this long to get attention, that is an issue. Well, a lot of people don't think he did anything wrong. Yeah. They they think it was all bluster, and 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 they and they buy it. And they may not agree with the bluster, but they don't think it was anything right. And 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 impeachable. They, and the Republicans have a very easy line where they say they got the money. Mm -hmm. They got and the I, military aid. Democrats argue you only got it after we but, brought this to but light. But all people hear is okay. So he said that he wasn't going to give them the money if they didn't do something. Military aid unless they was, investigated Biden. But what they hear is bottom line is he gave the money. Speaking of Joe Biden on the debate stage, given the fact that uh, one of the impeachment charges uh, that the president faces accuses him of abusing power by trying to have his political rival, Joe Biden, investigated by Ukraine in order to get that aid, how does he play that? Because that issue is going to stick to in 2020. You can bet, of course, Republicans are going to play that again and again, uh, depending on Joe Biden's ultimate position uh, as a hopeful nominee or perhaps the nominee. We won't know that until later this year. What's the sense of how Mr. Biden plays this? Well, I think we've seen him play this. He said that this is the president's way of diverting attention away from what he's done. And he's trying to remove culpability on his part by pointing fingers at everybody else. And this is a classic Trump strategy, right? When he gets kind of put in between a vice, you know, a rock and a hard place, he looks for someone else as the scapegoat. And this is his person he's locked onto. How do you think the FBI came across this week? A report said that the inspector general said there was no political bias in the investigation but they didn't like how the mechanics of the investigation were handled and deeply scolded the FBI for that. For those who are big supporters of President Trump, they say, see, it's deep state bias, the new term. Uh, Democrats say you're, you're misreading the uh, investigation and the political tea leaves. Your sense well, of that, it I seems mean, like it's another reinforcing it, it argument. Is, in my entire career covering politics, the one thing that Republicans were always steadfast about was law and order. Mm -hmm. If there was anybody who were supporters of the FBI, your local police, your local sheriff, whatever, by God, it was the Republicans. I don't even know who these folks are who, who, who for the last few years are cheerfully joining into the trashing of the FBI, calling them the deep state and all these other weird things. Uh, did, the, did, the F, did some people working for the FBI go too far? Probably, yes. That doesn't mean you trash the entire organization mm. or do the sort of token, well, there are a lot of men and women there who work hard and they're good, and then, but let me finish blasting. I, I just, to me, what's more troubling is, is uh, the attorney general. Before these reports even come out, William he's Barr. trashing them. And I, I, that's, I've never seen anything like that before either. I want to turn to a, one item that uh, we teased, so I want to get a quick thought and then a final thought on impeachment and kind of where we are in terms of faith or lack therein in a lot of American institutions anymore. But Governor DeSantis, and we did talk about this, said he's directing the Education Commissioner to require high school seniors to take a civic exam. It'd be like tests you take when you want to become a naturalized U.S. citizen. Mariana, you're a college professor. Your thought on that? I think that's fantastic. I think a lot of times our students leave school and they don't understand basic civic engagement and civics in general. You know, I have surveyed my students at the beginning of every semester and I ask them, do we have an understanding of who your representatives are nationally? I'm not even going to go state level because some of them don't even mm -hmm. know that. And I think that this is wonderful. I think this is fantastic. Brian, I'd quick. take it one step further. I'd take it so that at the time that you have to renew your driver's license, you have to take a civics test. Well, <laughs> you know, last because, quick, yeah. <laughs> we need more than high school yeah. kids. <laughs> you know? Last quick thought before we go to break on, on the damage many worry we're doing to uh, our sense of self as a nation, our, our civic, our political political institutions, media, where the constant partisan divide on all sides hammering away at the media, hammering away at the presidency, hammering away at Congress, hammering away, it seems, all the time at one another. Uh, what, what final thoughts do you have before we go to break, Brian? We could talk about this forever, I know, but you, you do talk about it a lot. Well, I, you, know, I, you know, I'm fond of saying, you know, Donald Trump, for all of his negatives, that, which are horrifying sometimes, didn't appoint himself to president. So he's not the cause of what's going on in the country right now. He may be exasperating it, but, you know, this has been going on for decades under the surface. This is going on. You know, you know who we don't talk about enough about? The millionaire medical cons media political consultant class. Those are the guys who drive a lot of this messaging. Mariana, your same question, your thoughts. I think that it's time that we kind of put partisanship behind us and we focus on finding solutions. There's a lot of problems. We, we can't debate that. We understand that. Mm -hmm. And it's working with other people who might not have the same opinion and standing next to them and saying, let's find a solution and let's not cause more problems. If only we could or can or will. Thank you both. Closing comments in just a moment.